uh, as everybody knows, we've made it a, a goal and a priority to uh, make sure that our team gets um, certified, obviously, uh, with Lean Six Sigma, as well as project management, and then a reinitiation of um, the sales supply chain strategy. So everybody knows who you are because you're a client. <laughs> so, there you go. Um, the Six Sigma way, Michael and I went to a, a white belt training. And it was great. Tyrone put it on on a Saturday, which is a good refresher course for me. Michael, of course, is so excited he can hardly stand it about getting going. Um, so this is kind of a two-fold meeting. Uh, one is because I wanted you guys to meet Tyrone. He is a master black belt in Six Sigma. So the guy is badass. Oh, I shouldn't say that online. I'm okay. I've got my moments. You tell us not to mess around. Uh, absolutely. So Kevin um, has um, studied the King of Certified Project Manager, Certified Project Manager on the side. So um, that's my my mother, my father. Um, Kevin, if you would uh, be so kind as to introduce yourself as far as your um, role within the company, that would be fantastic. We'll start with you, and then we'll do rounds from there. Hi there. I'm Kevin Bagley. I'm getting an echo uh, feedback. Let's see. Try muting your microphone, Linda. <sighs> okay, let's see if that's a little better. Okay, uh, I'm Kevin Bagley. Tyrone, say hi. Oh, how are you doing? Hi, Tyrone, how are you? All right, great. Good, good. Um, been involved with this for a very, very long time since it was a, a mild concept in a restaurant, so uh, uh, definitely have been around for the long haul. Um, my involvement right now with uh, CI Web Group is I'm acting as uh, Chief Operations Officer heading up the operations team. Um, I have a little bit of background in Six Sigma, uh, some project management experience uh, certified as is Linda. She went through project management certification. so. Uh, we, we've got a bit of background, but are definitely not the black belts, and, and look forward to hearing more about uh, what you have to offer. Great, fantastic, All right. thank you. Miss Linda, if you would introduce yourself, please. She has to unmute. Hi, I'm Linda Bagley, his better half. <laughs> <laughs> That's good job, right there. <laughs> yep, and. Um, Probably the most that I do is sit in the background with compliments and keep everybody organized through Kevin. They don't know that, but I do. Uh, I also am a huge factor in the finance and the reconciliation on the accounts. So, But I primarily handle special agents realty and our real estate brokerage and office. All right, Chris. Hello there, um, my name is Chris Heaney and uh, I do the technical stuff, everything that uh, occurs in the background, uh, servers, um, the hard programming, the database architectures of the larger projects that we do, um, map out more complex projects uh, and people, uh, people's roles in those projects and how long it'll take, uh, you know, for, for quoting out sales and uh, yeah, basic, basically everything IT, including uh, up in the ceiling, fiberglass wiring the office. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Welcome to the bathroom. Yeah, Jack Wall Street. Okay. All right, good deal, Josh. Hello, I'm Josh Klauser. I primarily do SEO and social media services, and then with our team, we work on quality assurance for all our products, websites. Yeah. All right, sounds good, fantastic, excellent. All right, thank you everyone for uh, the introductions. I'm actually going to get into my introduction whenever to get the slides, slide set up going. I can change my slide. Okay. And uh, I, I'm actually, I put this into a very brief format. Actually, the training, we have a three-hour training, which is the white belt, which is what Jennifer Michael went through. And I, I put together a condensed version just for you guys that should take no more than 10 or 15 minutes. We'll see how it goes. Thank you, Pam. I love technical time. Get that maxed out. So, ah, there you go. You want to screen share this? Yeah. Okay. Chris? 
Kyle's replacing you right now. <laughs> All right. That's right. I'm falling in love again. So everyone can see what, what I'm seeing here in the PowerPoint? Um, if you are not seeing it, be sure to click. You're not seeing the PowerPoint? Well, I'm seeing it. Be sure to click on the slide down at the bottom, and that will force it to okay. stay on the screen. Otherwise, it will bop back and forth to whomever is talking. Got it. And you may be on mute, Kevin. You may be picking up through Linda's. Maybe okay. backwards. Okay, so if anybody didn't hear that, uh, be sure and click on the screen at the bottom that says the Six Sigma Way uh, little screen. That will force it to stay on the screen. Right. Otherwise, it will switch back and forth to whomever is talking. So you just tell me when you're ready to rock and roll. I don't remember how to go full screen here. Full screen at the bottom right corner. This is like a projector. Oh, right there you go. This thing right here. No, no, left, 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 left. Right. I don't use power. Okay. It is. It is. I'm, I'm, sorry, old, I'm, just I'm old school. I'm old I'm school. I know. All right, so guys, here's what we got. And someone time me because I want to see if I can do this in 15 minutes or less. Okay. Someone time me. I don't know. Put, put Currently 4:15. All right. I'm put a little pressure on myself. All right. Uh, is Lean Six Sigma required to manage a business? That's like the big question a lot of companies are asking, and you'll find out what the answer is in a couple of seconds here. Okay. And let's see. All right. First, my bio. Why am I here? Why do you? Why would you even want to listen to me? Well, it's because I have exposure. It's not because I'm smart. Not because I'm wise. It's because I've been exposed to something called Lean and Six Sigma, and I've been doing it for over 14 years. Uh, my background is in operations, manufacturing, software, technical services, IT. Got a chance to train Michael Dell personally as a green belt at Dell Computers. I first learned about Lean Six Sigma back in the early 90s at Dell Computer, where I started as an industrial engineer. I was there for five years, then I went out to consulting. So specialty areas, call centers, IT, so a lot of high tech, uh, healthcare, and then uh, corporations that I work for. Storage Tech, Dell, and you, and you can see there, and I'm also a U.S. Air Force veteran. All right. Hoorah. All right. Hoorah. Yes. Yeah. But that's Marine. Yeah. true. So, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Aim high is what our thing was. Yeah. Real anyway. quick, the slideshow is not running. Uh-oh. Slideshow is not running? Okay. I'll back up. The slide. Right, actually, you can run the slideshow if you want. I just say next slide, and you can do it. Uh, I believe that the uh, Google Hangout, just like it wouldn't pick up my Linux box, uh, won't grab the window handle if it's in full screen. Oh, got you. Oh, okay. How about I, I that? Even, I, I saw a change. Yeah, it's changed. Got it? All right. Okay, that I works? That. Yep. Okay. Now we can see it. Can I change slides? Yeah. Um, yeah. How about that? Okay. All right. All right. I'll keep rolling then. All right. All right. So uh, our quick agenda is... Why Six Sigma? Why, why do we, should we even do it? Why Lean? And why Lean and Six Sigma together? Here's what a lot of people don't understand, is that Lean was a standalone methodology. It had its own uh, methods and principles, and Six Sigma had its own methods and principles, but over time they were combined because they both went after a continuous improvement. So when people hear about Lean Six Sigma, they think it's all one big thing in a big pot. No, it was actually one piece and another, and they were stirred together later. So I'll explain what they are individually, then I'll put them together, and then we'll wrap it up. All right, at first, here's a little challenge. For those of you who like numbers, if you can look at these numbers, I know it's kind of hard for the people here to look at the numbers, but this is a, a company that delivers pizza. And on the left-hand side, it shows Barb's Domino Pizza, and then on the right-hand side, it shows Mikey's Domino Pizza. What I like for you to do is, in your brain, calculate the average. Which one of these, and the company target is 30 minutes. Which one of these, uh, these uh, pizza stores is actually delivering with the best target quality? Target is 30, so which one is, on average, performing better? Anyone want to take a guess? If you can see the numbers, 30, uh, I'll tell you, Mikey has 30, 30, 30, 29, 31, and then Barb has 30, 29, 27, 25. Which one is more consistent? Anybody one guess? on the right. On the right. Okay, one says the one Definitely. on the right. So, Definitely one on the right, more consistent. Okay, everyone says the one on the right is more consistent. But the, the, the point is, which one has the better average? If you mathematically did the average, which one would have the, the better? On the you know how the average works? You add them all up and divide, so which one would have the better average? That's too oh. much math to do in my head. Well, that's why, that's why you have computers. Yeah, that's exactly. what computers oh. are for. Now watch this. I'll tell you which is the better performer. 
The answer is one average wise, they perform the same. So if you had to tell me on, on a telephone, hey, which one is the better performer, you wouldn't be able to tell just by the average. So the point I'm making, an average measurement is a poor way to, to measure performance. But that's what most people measure their company by. What is it? My average sales is this. My average defects are that. My average is this. My average. The average is a terrible way to drive your performance. So what you need to do is look at how much it varies. And the way you can measure how much it varies is by a thing over here, if I can put my standard mouse over here. Curve. Standard deviation right yeah. here on the right. There's a number called standard deviation. And the lower that number is, the more consistent you are. So if you look at the green one, it's less than 1.0. And, and I can mouse back and forth here. Thank you. I can mouse back and forth. You see the green one? Very, very tight, very narrow. That has a standard deviation of 0.7. Barb is all over the place. That's a sign of inconsistency. Sometimes the piece is delivered at 25 minutes, sometimes at 34, sometimes at 30. But when you have a lot of early deliveries and a lot of late deliveries, they average in the center. So you get a false sense of what's really how well you're performing. So if you ever have any company or any business that's driving their business purely on averages, they're in trouble. Everyone get that? Yes, yes, yes? Respond yes. with a yes, 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 yes. I'm good. All right. Yes. Next. All right. So Six Sigma, what is it? It's focused on reducing the amount of defects that you're getting in your process and minimizing variability. So when I showed you that wide pizza delivery, that sucks. When I show you the skinny one, that's good. And most companies want to be good. What would be perfection? If I was delivering pizza and I wanted a target of 30, what would every delivery be? 30. Uh, so what, what kind of a, would it have like a wide shape or would it be a straight line up and down? Straight line up and down. Okay. Every company wants to be a skinny line straight up and down. And that's what you are. That's right. Okay. So in the short term, if you make a million things, like, if, like when you're coding and things like that, if you have zero defects out of a million, that's what Six Sigma is. When you start getting no defects, your Sigma level goes down to 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, and very, very bad. All right. Next slide. If I can get it going here. Whoops. Yeah. I think we got to touch the white space here. Yeah, I don't think that's the easiest way to do it. Okay. All right. What is lean? Lean came from Toyota. You probably heard of the Toyota production system. What happened? The way the way lean came about is that when uh, Ford Motor Company, when when Henry Ford came out with the assembly line, what he said is, you know what? We can make a lot of cars with low skilled people. The old ways to make cars would be five smart people that would put together one car. Well, Henry Ford said, what if I get everybody in the line and I get some very so low-skilled people, and all I do is put on one thing, and then I just push the cars by them. So what they would do is push a car in front of somebody and say, put on the door handle all day, door handle, door handle. Next person puts on window, window, window. If you get a long enough line before you finish, your cars are coming out every few seconds. So Henry Ford came up with that concept. The only problem is... When you make a lot of stuff, there's an opportunity to make a lot of mistakes. So they didn't bake into how do they manage quality. Well, what Toyota said is, you know what? If you're going to make a lot of things, how do we have quality baked into it? And what Toyota's looking at is, how do you take wasteful activities out of your process? So wasting of your people resources, waste within your process, waste within your assets, and wasted data. Data that's not being used is what? Waste. You got it. All right. So what does lean identify waste in your process? So what lean does is this is this is your, your process here, Jennifer. I'm just making this up. Let's say this was your process. You got sales and marketing. Everything you see red is not, is not really valuable. Everything you see green is really valuable. So what you want to do is get an order. You want to make some kind of product or service. You want to ship it. You want to invoice it. You want to get paid. Everything else in between, you want to get rid of as much of it as possible. So what your job is to do, shorten the timeline for the red stuff. That's called non-value add. When it says handle paperwork or design and order parts or order a web page or whatever, look how much time. This is like the timeline from zero to finished. As you can see, you add up the time of green, 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 green. That's not a whole lot of time. What's eating up most of your time? Red stuff. You guys get it? Not valuable add. So a good company would dig right into the biggest red area and say, look, 
for for us to get a web page developed from from the time somebody wants an order to the time they actually get the web page, where's the biggest bottleneck? Well, if you know these are the value ones, the green ones are the value ones, leave those alone. But if you know that's not the high value, the one with the biggest timeline that's not valuable, go work on it. And what we're saying, lean is a method to get rid of waste. Ninety-five of mo uh, percent of most processes is a wasteful activity. Only five percent is valuable, and that's in everything. So I got a job for life. I ain't just walking to the company and say, "Hey, ninety-five percent of what you're doing is wasteful. Prove it to me." And I've been doing it for years and years. Okay, that's the power. All right, and also within there, I forgot to mention, there's a tool called the Seven Deadly Wastes, which identifies what these red areas are. Overproduction, inventory, motion, waiting, transportation, overprocessing, and not doing it right the first time. If you get rid of all these seven things, these red bands will like shrink to nothing. So if you only added up the green bands, it'd almost be half the time, wouldn't it? Look at that. That's what you call more money, more money. The third. <laughs> all right. So uh, why lean six sigma combined? Because lean changes the focus of your management from op optimizing separate technologies and assets to going vertical. From the vertical, actually you're going horizontal. So if you go vertical in a silo, you know what that means? That means that uh, you're good at operations, but you don't care about logistics. That means you're good at developing a web, but you don't care about the marketing. And you got to care about the whole supply chain. As I showed you previously, you notice this was a chain. If I go back a slide, from end to end is what's important to you. Not siloed vertical. Don't say, oh, man, we're great at getting orders. Oh, man, we're great at making products. Oh, man, we're great at shipping. It doesn't matter. If nothing's getting out, you all suck, Amen. basically. You're loving that, right? Amen. <laughs> Jim was like, yeah, everybody needs to see that one. So, but that's what the bottom line. You're all here to do a horizontal combined process. So like I said, Lean allows you to optimize your flow horizontally and Six Sigma strategically compares your processes by capability and not just by your average but by your capability, as I said earlier. All right, so what are the certifications? White belt, which is uh, entry level three hours. Yellow belt, which is a two-day course, eight, uh, 16 hours. Green belt, uh, three days. Black belt is another five days. And Mac master black belt is a one-on-one -on -one scenario where you actually become an instructor like myself. And why should you do it? Any company not performing op optimally, which is most companies, they have waste. And if they have variants, they're very wide and they want to get skinny. You go with the Lean Six Sigma training, it's effective, and you, and guess what? At the end of the day, you're going to have happy customers, profits, not be a victim, and you have new skills. And if you're a person seeking impactful results, this is great for putting your resume. And jobs, jobs out there, they're looking for people that have this skill that says two year degree is desired, Lean Six Sigma black belt is required. So they're actually moving away from academia. So if you've got an MBA and all these degrees, it's not really adding up anymore. What they want is people that got skills and experience. And then industries, are industries using it? Here's a testimonial. There's a billion dollar West, uh, utility company, and they have validated savings, 225 million in three years. I don't know about you, but 200 million is pretty good in three years. And then uh, a supplier, 100 day uh, stabilization and lean, and they got 25% reduction in inventory, 200% improvement in operating margin. This is what you're talking about. So a supply chain, these are the numbers they want to see. That's what gets the supply chain person happy. So that in mind, that's your lean success. Q&A. Okay, um, quick question. So would you do me a favor? I'm Keith, I need you to set up Prezi, and I need that. that um, you want me to use that instead? And then, Tyrone, will you please do me a favor, and will you give them your synopsis of the difference between and I know you've kind of touched on Lean versus Six Sigma, mm -hmm. but also the variation versus project management and supply chain management from okay. your view. Okay. That would be great. Okay. Because those are four uh, different components, and okay. I want everybody to understand. Okay. Did you want me to write? How do you want me to do it? Live? Or do you have something I can do? Yeah. Okay. I got the work for it. Okay. In the Google. You want to do that one? The small one? How do you bring, how do you bring Prezi into Google? Uh, <laughs> Hey, man, I was pushing, man, to make that time. Then. 12 minutes, 30 seconds. <laughs> not bad. Not bad. Not, not bad, bad at all. Not, not bad for a whole lot of information. I just shoved it down. Like, <laughs> I'm pretty, I'm pretty excited. I, I just put that together just for you guys like one or a couple hours ago. Great.
keeps so the window. I went over well. out, pull the tab down into its own window, and then from Google Hangouts, just go to Screen Share again and choose the, the correct window. I'm excited. All right. Um, so four topics. I want everybody to understand the difference yep. between Lean, yep. Six Sigma, mm -hmm. Project Management, and Supply Chain. And um, one, obviously, what's the difference? And two, how do they interact with each other? What is why is it so critical that yeah. someone has an understanding of all three, or better yet, even okay. the sort of Uh, for all of our online attendees, can you tell me what you see right now? We see the screen share. If you click the screen share button, that will go away and we'll see the camera. Uh, can you see Prezi? Can you see a, a web page? Not yet. Uh, we see the chart. We see the chart. Presentation. Portable Lean PowerPoint. Six Sigma training. Yeah. PowerPoint. All right, we got it. Perfect. Thank you. What, what uh, presentation do you want to uh, sign up? Oh, okay. The, the hey, Michael, no insult me, no insultment, but you are definitely black. I can see your teeth, and that's it. <laughs> I'm sitting, in, I'm sitting in the dark. That's all you're going to see. Oh, man. <laughs> that is funny. You need to shed, shed some light on that man. How about your... You can, you Let can there be light. And then, did you hit the screen share? It's time I need to drag this down to its own tab. Screen share. Hey, I see uh, Keith. And if you want to do Prezi, go ahead and click on it again. Click on screen share? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, ask you which window you want to share. Perfect. So there's, there's the All right, um, but let's do this one first so they can see the screen. Are they going to be able to see this one? Yep. Oh, quick screen share again. <laughs> wow, that was cool. Oh, Look at that. Oh, that that right here proves there are other dimensions. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's good. Do you guys want to know where your bandwidth goes? Right there. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's see what else we have. Um, you guys want to know where your bandwidth goes? Right there. Right. All right, you guys. Thank you. <laughs> I don't know if it's going to be clear enough. Nine distance. Maybe you turn the light. You might, yeah, is there another light right there too? Yeah, we can turn the light too. Thank you. And uh, so basically, what I'm going to do is really uh, put put all these together. A lot better. Put all these together, and you might not see it that clear, but uh, Jennifer asked me to really talk about the four entities that are really important to your business. So I'll just give you a high level definition, then I'll talk about the synergy of all four together. So as I said before, the definition of lean was, anybody remember, removing what? Waste. See, y'all learned something. How about that? That was your best 15 yeah. minutes or 12 minutes. Removing waste in just one area or all areas? All areas. All areas. All, areas. all right. What is Six Sigma focused on? You remember? Optimizing uh, I want all of the newbies. Uh, okay, Jennifer, what is Six Sigma, guys? Jennifer, what? shut up. Why? <laughs> what does it take? What is Six Sigma? It takes... Lean. No, remember you looked at the uh, it's a bell curve. Remember mm -hmm. someone was inconsistent. You right. take something inconsistent. What do you do? Make it consistent. There you go. The opposite. Make it consistent. You can so make things more standard consistent. Standard deviation. The bell curve. The plus decrease. Plus too minus. technical. Too technical. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Makes it more consistent. Thank you. Break it down. None of that technical talk. Make it, make it simple. All right, project management. Anybody want to give a shout out what they believe project management? Time blocking? <laughs> Everybody off Google search. <laughs> tapped out and Rose said a lot of work. Okay, you get a project and you got to execute to it based on time, resources, and, and some type of quality level or something like that. Okay. Okay. All right, and then supply chain. Anybody have any idea what's in? Well, they call it a chain because it obviously it goes in a, in a circle. So the system of organizations, people, and technology activities, information, resources involving moving a product. Wait, wait. Give me the high level. Give me the high level activities. Anybody know the high level to make that chain? 
Um, First, you have to have some kind of a need, right? And I'm not going to make it very technical, but if you have a need for some type of supply of something, right? Then you have to find a source where you can get where you can get it from, right? Then after you got a source, then you got to see how they can get it to you. You have to get an incoming or uh, you know an incoming supply. And then when you get it, you have to be able to make sure that it has optimal quality. So you might have some quality checks. Then you have to be able to in integrate it into your process. So it goes into your process. And then you have to have some type of, uh, depending on what kind of business you're in, you might have to have some type of reverse logistics, which basically means if you sell a computer, you have to keep parts for warranty reasons to make sure that you can replace those parts. I remember at Dell, that can be up to sometimes lifetime keeping parts and things of that nature. So basically, a supply chain is how all your goods are in services from inception all the way to use by the customer at a high level. Everyone good with that? Okay. Yep. So, yep. Yep. All right. Now, how do they all work together? Well, lean is process focused. So that's going to be your synergy there. It's focused on the process of how you're executing to get your target results. So really your target results is what all these are about. If you're getting your target results, would you have to worry about any of these methodologies? No. You and you just keep it moving. But since you're not perfect, you're going to have to look at these uh, entities to understand how they work together. So this one is process focused, Six Sigma. That's process focus as well, but from that uh, making the consistent pers perspective. What is project management? They're the execution arm. They are the execution. So really, the uh, the way that project management works with Lean and Six Sigma, they're first to back. Lean and Six Sigma will be the discovery tool. Okay, discovery, just like a Sherlock Holmes. You, you all, whenever you look at a process, you want to know who did it or what's broken. Well, a project manager is not trained on the what's broken thing. They're trained on how to execute something you want them to do. So if you want to look at a good analogy, if you drive up a car and your car is making noise, your engine is going, and it's making a grinding noise, the mechanic would be the project manager. He would walk up and say, hey, what's the problem? Say, well, the, the car is making noise. But there could be a ton of issues that can cause that noise. So you don't know what it is. So a project manager is almost clueless without you defining where they need to work on as a project. So what the Lean Six Sigma person is, this person here is your diagnostic tool. You roll up the Lean Six Sigma person, you plug them in, and then they look at all the potential causes, and they come up with the top two viable ones out of a potential 20. And then they give it to the mechanic and say, okay, mechanic, if you work on these two things, you will fix the problem with the engine. Do you see how when you don't have one or the other, you're going to be in trouble? If you have someone who's just good at executing, they're going to execute on a lot of the wrong things. They're going to be good at it, but it's the wrong stuff. And then if you've got to have somebody over here that's just constantly discovering, well, they're going to discover stuff, but ain't nothing, nothing going to get done because they don't do that. So what they're going to say is, oh, we need to put in this implementation. It's going to take 12 months. Well, oh, I haven't worked on a project the past 30 days. I don't know how to do that. I don't know how to manage long-term projects. They don't know that, but I know how to discover what's broken, and, and vice versa. And then supply chain, how do they plug into this? Well, as a function of doing these things right, this will allow you to manage and deliver to customer expectations. So the customer is going to have expectations regarding the supply, what you're giving them. There's going to be uh, 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 what they call a... Uh, a scorecard or dashboard of their expectations. They might say, whenever someone goes to my website, I want to be able to have it uh, pop up within 0.3 seconds or whatever. So that might be that metric. Or they want to make sure, hey, I never get a 404 error. I'm just picking some things up. So I'm just going for it. I remember I'm kind of halfway. Right on. But my point is, all of these things, you and so in really in the web development area, you guys are supposed their, your, their end result is a web page. So how would they measure you? It might be speed, it might just say a number of errors, pop-up, or something's not launching, or whatever, I click on it, and it doesn't change to the right, or the animation doesn't jump out. 
whatever the defect is, you're not hitting their expectations. These things back here will help you to hit those expectations. So if you just have a good supply chain without the structure behind it to keep it improving, you're going to fail. You're just going to be delivering, hey, we gave you that. Well, didn't we give you that last week? Yeah. Oh, I had an error. Okay, we'll make sure it doesn't happen again. How are you going to make sure it doesn't happen again? Well, just try harder. You've been trying hard all your life. Trying harder doesn't change things. If you want to, if you want to change things, have a real process that can get you there. So that's the synergy. Having that by itself, failure. Having that by itself, failure. Having this by itself, failure. Putting it all together, win. Any questions? All right. Any Q and A? People on the web? Got it. Outstanding. Just like the other day of class. There you go. All right. So with that in mind, you know, as far as what I perceived our next steps was, is to now that we we put this out here, and you guys now have a, a basic understanding of what I do and how we're integrating what you guys do. I'm interested in seeing how you guys see us playing the sandbox. All right, so um, let me um, not put all your things so you need content. <laughs> um, and Kyle, will you do me a favor? Will you switch on the screen share on here? You got it. Okay, thank you. All right, so um, will you get in the seat here? Yeah, sit down Can I give okay. you a seat tomorrow? All right, I'll all right. sit wherever you want me to sit. Mm -hmm. All right, and I'm watching. Yeah, you're good on here. All right. Um, so this is going to be as out of the box as possible. Is everyone online seeing the Prezi? Yep. Alright. Yep. Um, this will be very, very, very out of the box. Because technically right now, um, the group in here operates in a, a web development, digital marketing, digital media and support environment. However, our transition um, into a new business is inevitable. That's We're already there and we're already doing this. So what we want to do is a couple things. One, I want to explain a new business model to you that we're in the process of launching. Um, secondly, I believe that you and or uh, the Six Sigma Way should play a huge role in it uh, for multiple reasons. One, because we can put you on a pedestal and we can give you the marketing exposure, we can give you the content, we can give you the marketplace, we can give you um, all of the things that are not necessarily within your, your subject matter expertise or your area of strength. That's what we can bring to the table with a large backbone infrastructure and the network and the team to be able to do that. Uh, secondly, I think that you can be part of something that is very, very new and exciting, which is the concept of supply chain management for sales, which technically at this point has not been defined. Right now we own salessupplychain.com. We're in the process of developing uh, the sales supply chain uh, or the association of sales supply chain professionals as a part of a multi-tiered business structure. So essentially what this is, is this is um, four different businesses that literally can operate independently as standalones. However, the power of grouping them together is absolutely amazing. In, a short uh, in our business, I'll give you an example. The way that we generate business is twofold, well, threefold. One, existing customers. Two, speaking, which is event-based marketing, which is education. That's what you do. When you did your free white belt training, that's what it's for. Is you're obviously out there putting yourself out there in order to be able to move people through a process uh, of sales. And the third component is digital media, which is the process of uh, communicating with the world through web, search, social, mobile, digital, video media. And all three of them technically should work together. Now, right now, this is DNet events, which in a normal or traditional speaker environment, a speaker is trying to get booked. So, for example, you should be out speaking like crazy. You should be delivering that presentation over and over and over to every large audience of people that are great prospects for you. Normally, what has to happen for a speaker to do that is they've got to call on organizations, try and get themselves booked, they have to go through the legwork and labor, try and get their bios in, compete with other speakers, negotiate on price, and so forth. It's a long process. What we've, can I draw on this piece? 
Yes. Okay. So what we've done is we've taken DNet events and we've dropped it into basically. We still see the presentation. Uh, you're good. She's drawing on the whiteboard. I'm drawing on the on the presentation on the wall. Oh. We can't um, see that. You're good. So basically, I drew two <laughs> boxes. One of those sub boxes. Bring as you fight. Let us see. I'm telling you, draw it in your head. <laughs> so see? one of the well, it's basically divisor see? divided into two boxes. One of those boxes is um unless Keith, if you want to put it back on video and you can. All right. Whiners. We'll bend whiners. Whiners. No whiners. Get some cheese Train and crackers. Train as you fight. Train as you fight. All right. Get some cheese and crackers. So we've broken into two different um, divisions. One has to do with organizations. Organizations and associations. Hmm. That would be a chamber, a nonprofit, a um, an association of dental professionals, the association of medical professionals. Today we met with the medical no, Dallas no, County no, Medical no. Society. Um, might be the association of contractors and so forth. So organizations that the way that they generate new membership is through education, and they leverage speakers all the time. Within this, whiners, and then just sorry, and you're good. Okay. And, all right. Jennifer's drawing on the wall. I see, see that. Because, is it better? Because she can. All right. So within organizations, typically what happens, and it's a broken process, it's a broken process. The organization randomly no, chooses a speaker. They bring a speaker in. The membership or the guests who attend that, they have no clue who's coming, what's going on. They don't know who came first, and they don't know who's coming next. The speaker shows up. They have no idea uh, which... They have no idea um, which speaker came before them, what speaker's coming after them. So for a membership organization that's trying to drive membership, they can't get guests to attend because every time they have a new event, they're starting from ground zero. They have to remarket it, re-promote it, and everything else. When, technically, if you were to create a series, a six-speaker series, a 12-speaker series, a 24-speaker series, where, one, it's considered a project. So the project is the group of six speakers understands the organizational needs and goals. The group of six speakers knows how to deliver their presentation in a way to help the organization grow their membership. And in addition to that, they know who came first and who came second. So if you came before me, you would essentially be able to say, you guys, I'm so happy you came today. You do not want to miss next week's presentation. It's going to be delivered by Jennifer. I was able to concentrate on blank. She's going to help you take it through and do blank, blank, and blank. So we can actually gain it makes momentum. sense, right? It starts to make sense rather than these random events. Random. Follow. And just to, just to add to that, I just did an uh, event about uh, uh, last week. Mm -hmm. I was uh, presenting to the SMTA, uh, the Surface Mount Technology Asso mm -hmm. Association, out there in, uh, in I think it was uh, somewhere here in Richardson. But anyway, long story short, uh, I got there. They halfway didn't know who I was. I was coming, and then you know they knew I was going to do Lean Six Sigma, didn't know how far. So I was going to go with it. So it's still, it's like you said, it's kind of like all over the place. Random. Mm -hmm. It was a random thing. They're all volunteers. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They have no clue how to vet a speaker, qualify a speaker, choose a speaker, True. set Locked it up. They don't know the what project. they're going to get. They didn't get anything out of the can, and they don't know what they're going to get. Absolutely. Until shows up and them. the worst part is right. they're bringing you in with the mission of building membership, but they won't tell you how to do it. Right. They don't share that with and you. They just say, go for it, Tyrone. Tell us what you want to do. Have a great day. Have and I hope day. you're go good and I'm not embarrassed. That's basically what they say. <laughs> hope you're good. Don't embarrass me. That's okay. what they <laughs> They did say that. Well, Ooh. Ooh. man, you know, they didn't say don't embarrass me. With this, there's a fundamental yeah. major, major issue with how that's being done. So far, we have pre-sold organizations such as the Dallas Independent School District, the Black um, Contractors Association, the Hispanic Contractors Association, um, the Dallas Medical 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 and so forth. Make We've pre-sold them by going in and saying, not very good at this. This is why. This is your mission. You're doing nothing that's supporting you accomplishing your mission. However, we can put this together for you. This is our expertise. It's delivering this in a project management environment, being able to properly set up the goal, the infrastructure, the people, and deliver properly. Got it. So, okay. second thing. This is the second component. Companies. For a company that has a large sales organization, uh, for example, uh, yesterday we met with the CFO Advisory Board. CFO Advisory Board has a sales organization. They have 300 clients, all that are business owners doing between $1 million and $10 million in annual sales. They are decision makers in the companies that participate, and they're outsourcing their CFO. Their number one issue for a company like that when it comes to business development is, one, 
they don't have a plan for implementing referral generation and client retention techniques to be able to grow the business. They get the business, ignore the customer. Get the business, ignore the customer. And they don't know what to do with them because resources don't grow with clients. So if I have three salespeople and 50 clients and it grows into 500, I'm screwed because I have no resources to match them. I agree. I'm not adding accounts. I agree. All right. So okay. second thing that they're having issues with, obviously, is growing the business through digital media, which is totally a different environment. What we can do in this environment is teach a company or offer them a solution, same thing. They have a database of existing customers that, if given additional value and communication on a frequent basis, they would refer to them. They would show up. Now, if CFO Advisory Board decides that they're going to host CPA classes and accounting classes and finance classes, are their customers going to come? Probably not. But if they were to host a uh, supply chain management for mid-sized companies course, would they come? Absolutely. So they can use our speaker series, one that's doing digital media, one that's doing social media, one that's doing um, uh, right. uh, sales process and so forth, in order to bring their customers in, add an item of value, have that face time with them without increasing resources, headcount, or cost, but they can build their business bottom line. Makes a lot of sense to me. Cool. All right. I'm on board. So okay. next company, basically. This we already have in place, and we already have a book. <laughs> Right now, before we have a website, before we have business cards or anything else, we have over 360 guaranteed events that are waiting for our speaker wow. series today. Now, um, one of those organizations, by the way, is an organization called Untied. They have 22 chapters locally. They have another 15 chapters in Austin, Texas. The attendees of those are typically between 20 and 40 senior executives, they must be a CEO, they have to have been in business for three years or longer, and they have to have a minimum of three to five employees, minimum. Wow. So we have the right Huge. to be able to book for all of those events. To me, Beautiful. being one of their speakers, they're one of my number one sources of new business. Beautiful. So that's easy business. Oh, yeah. Now, I'm, I'm <laughs> next one is speakers. <coughs> Average speaker, they don't have product. If they do have something to sell, it's a book, a CD, a coaching class, it's crap. It's all junk. They also, all of their sales items are all one-time sales unless it's some membership-based thing with a low low monthly fee and it's very difficult for them to keep, keep people retained and they're constantly having to produce content in order to be able to keep people engaged. So that's one issue with speakers. Second issue with speakers are all pre-Madonna. Well, I'm recording this. A lot of them are pre-Madonna. <laughs> so they, they typically have large egos, no back office experience. What you drew up there gives them night sweats. They will freak out if they have to manage a back office operations, lead generation, prospecting, data management, CRM system, data, any of that, they will absolutely freak out. So she speaks from that. experience. Uh, I'm, a, I'm an anomaly. <laughs> I might be a prima donna and have a slight ego issue, but I have the other things in life. <laughs> so for speakers. They can't book themselves in addition. So now, what happens is, is DNET Events essentially secures full positioning guaranteed rights. If, a, if an organization or a company signs on this agreement, they're signing that they can't hire a speaker during that 6, 12, 18, or 24 month contract because it will dilute the program and ruin it. Right. So if the speaker calls them and wants to speak, what do they have to do? Come they have to you. contact the agency. Come see us. Okay. So, yeah. CNET speakers, they're able to pay a monthly fee, different levels, everything from $250 a month all the way up to $5,000 a month, depending on what they want. Do they just need us to book engagements? Do they want us to book engagements, do their before, during, and after marketing promotions, do their video, take their photographs, send up their Facebook photos, market on Twitter, create their hashtags, send out their blog posts? Do they want us to record the event and so forth? Do they need us to send resources to them? Do they need us to work the door, work the back room, collect the leads? Most speakers have no clue what's involved in actually delivering a converting speaking engagement. They can get up and talk, right. but they walk away with nothing, no better than yeah. they were before. They left their name on the, on the, on the board. So you're going to have like a criteria to even come in here? You have to meet certain criteria to come so, up to this? Good. You're perfect. Okay, so two different divisions within speakers, same thing. First is existing. These people have been doing it. We'll check, obviously, videos. We'll check references. We'll have an idea of who they spoke for. So if it's free speaker, they spoke for local networking events, that's one type of speaker, and that's where we would place them until we were able to develop their skills. If it's someone that spoke for large, large organizations and so forth, that's a different type. If it's someone that spoke at national conferences, 
That's a different type of speaker. We have an entire series called Capacity, which we've already got developed a speaker content program that has three different levels, a capacity building program, um, we have a, a center level and a pro. Essentially, what we will teach these speakers, and our goal is to create a very large audience of them that focus 100% on behavior. And the behavior is going to be them identifying change management, personal development. Basically, we want a large group of people that are out delivering presentations that help people become more self-aware, increase their self-esteem, increase their change management abilities, for, and like I said, personal development, in order to prep those audiences to even be able to learn. Most of the time when you go in and deliver a presentation, when you come in and speak, the problem is, is one, you don't know what personalities you have in this room, so you have no idea where your analytical people are versus your controllers versus your total um, supporters and your, your influencers who they just want to go have a cocktail. So that's one issue, but the other issue is you don't know what capacity level is. You might be dealing with a symbol and a trough in the same event. Right, right, so the more right. you pour, the symbol is overflowing. Right. So, Quick question on, okay. this, on this piece. Would there, uh, right now, it's your thought process. Is if there any speakers that would be denied joining you, or it's just a matter of where they would join you? Don't know yet. I would have okay. to Yeah. So, yeah, know yeah. That. Because the, my point is, uh, for example, a motivational speaker. Mm -hmm. I've been at, you know, I've been in corporate America where we'd have a team building event. And we'd have a guy who was a uh, Zig Ziglar or whatever come in and say, hey, you know, I'm going to show you how to be a great leader, blah, 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 blah. Now, would that kind of a speaker be someone you would uh, put in your program or be only a speaker that has something that they want to sell? Oh, that is a great question. I probably should have started that. Yeah. Everything, all speakers have to fit within our sales supply chain. So what we've okay. done is we've, we have a draft. Okay. Don't nail it yet, because okay. I've already seen some issues with it. Okay. We, are okay. we are creating the mm -hmm. sales supply chain, okay. um, which essentially is going to be broken into behavior, technology, and strategy. Under behavior, it will be skill set, mindset, heart set. So heart set will be <laughs> really? mission, purpose, values, and so forth. Okay. Um, uh, mindset, obviously, that's going to be behavior training, personal development, and so forth. So for your question, a motivational speaker would fit in that. Okay. Uh, and then the skill set, obviously, that's a different skill set. And then we get into technology, which is hardware, software, cloudware. Then we get into strategy, customer service, sales, marketing. And then on top of that, we'll have, obviously, ancillary things on the side. So okay. the first thing is we have to develop that. But a speaker has to fit in there. The goal of the speaker is not to sell products and services, though. Okay. Now, remember what I showed you initially when I was in my presentation. You have to have a horizontal going on where you don't have these individual things that are not talking to each other. Mm -hmm. Do you want it to be like that or yes. do you want them to work together? I want it to work. Well, one, we have to do that because we have to be able to take that and divide it into a six series supply chain, which is a short and condensed version, a 12 series, 18 series, 24, and so forth. I guess the question I had is, is I know you said there were separate companies, but uh, are these going to be connected? Is there, a, is there a transition from DNet events all the way to something? Or these are just separate entities that need to be integrated somehow? Um, they will 100% from a back office standpoint be one. Okay. So ERP, all same database, all same data, all, all right. same information, transfer right. of data. I'm just trying to, okay, the, re the reason why I'm saying is maybe I'm not making, maybe I'm not clear. What I'm saying is uh, from start to finish, you, uh, you see where I'm going? I'm what, is, what is my left to right? So I guess yes. the way I'm seeing this is, you come in and you have to make a decision. Are you going to be someone that's uh, scheduling an event or somebody that's going to be speaking at an event? I think those are the two problems right now. Mm -hmm. And then as you come in, certain things happen to you and certain, and certain things, we, we discuss things with you, depending on whether you're a speaker entity or you're an entity that would like to have speakers speak for you. Yes. Correct. I'm going to come right? back. Yes, I'm going and to that, come that's back pretty much that. the two ways to get in. Yes, Other there are that, more. Really? There are more. So That's I'm going to come I back to that. that part no, right you, here. And it should, right. but it will make sense at the end. Okay. But definitely, I'm, I'm and I feel your questions. There are right. a few different entry points, a couple different exit points, and some wrap okay. uh, As long as it flows. <laughs> it Remember, you don't want spaghetti. You get spaghetti, then it gets back. Toast. Absolutely. Okay. All right. All right. So um, speaker that comes in. They're either existing. Yeah. Or they come in, they want to be a speaker. We put them yeah. through a certification program, teach them our program, put them in smaller groups into the marketplace, get people ready to learn, and then send in a top-notch speaker. I love it. That's excellent. All right. 
So that's the speaker organization now. The speaker's job is to do one thing. We will teach them how to close. But their job is to close on a either 911, I need your help right now. So somebody attended, we don't sell. But at the end of the event, if you say, look, I hope you guys had a great time. However, if one of you need my help right now, you're more than welcome to check 911. Right. 911, and that goes to you. Now, in addition to that, we have a 100-point uh, assessment that is going to help you identify how effective you are. Don't count. It's arbitrary number. Okay. <laughs> um, but it's going to help. It's going to help you identify how effective you are mm -hmm. in each area of the supply chain and what your desire is to improve. So you got to take it. It's a free assessment. It's going to really, really help you identify where those weaknesses are, and we're going to be able to set you up with a strategy expert in that area where you show a high need for improvement and a high want, a desire to improve. Our strategy experts are absolutely complimentary for you. I actually brought a document around that called a SWOT analysis. Yeah. Strength, yeah. weakness, opportunity, yeah. threat. See? Yeah. I was prepared. You were prepared. All right, keep rolling. All right. Keep rolling. So this assessment, when they complete it, it's going to identify, and we are looking for only qualified opportunities. So we want high need and a high want. Both. Jennifer. Yes. Can you please turn off the projector? We can't see anything you're writing. And you don't see the, you don't see the, uh, um, how about I'll tell you what I'm writing? I'd prefer to see it. I know, but you then you won't no be able to can. see it because because then you won't see what else she, what she's breaking it. out. See? All right, well you can look over. Do you see it? That doesn't she, work. She can't see it. Yeah. What's what's your prizzy uh, link? Uh, well, you can always do this. I'll right? stop writing. How do I hear? The events and just put the squares there, right, and you can right. follow it. Oh, that's smart. And then we're going to check back on. Process you are smart, too. Sorry, process guy. <laughs> process guy moved the projector. Hit the wire. Uh, strategy. And the association. All right. No, All right. Now you can pull it down. All right. All right. So um, speaker's goal is to sell the assessment. They take an online assessment that unless assessment produces a need. This is where, one, I think you guys need to play a huge role. There's two places I think, well, I think you should play a role in all of it. But here, four, one of the areas of supply chain is going to be supply chain management, project management, Six Sigma, Lead Six Sigma, which has to go in this, this circle. So what we have is we have strategy partners. These are strategic partners in our company. They have a B-level ownership position in our company, profit sharing, a great revenue model to be able to, to generate revenue off all of this. These strategy partners role within our organization is when this assessment shows there is a high need and want for Lean Six Sigma, Six Sigma, project management and so forth, it's your responsibility to do a secondary qualification on them under DNet Strategies brand. So what it would look like is, thank you so much for taking our assessment. We've shown that obviously you have a large need in this particular area. I need to be able to ask you some questions that are going to help me save you a tremendous amount of time. I'm a, a senior strategist from the company. I've been in business, blah, blah, blah. I've done this. I've done this. I've done this. I've done this. You're a major subject matter expert, not just a call center or a clerical person. So in this environment, your job would be to do this, that secondary qualification that's hard for a normal cons consumer vendor relationship. You're going to be able to ask about budget. You're going to be able to ask about timeline. Who are the decision makers? Um, who are the authority people within the company? Who are the ones who are the champions? Who's saying that we don't want to do this? Who are the skeptics? Who are the gatekeepers? So ask the hardest questions that you have in a sales environment because you're a third party. The more open and honest they are with you up front, the easier it's going to be for you to be able to properly place them with a vendor. Want to hear the good news? Yes. Good news is we've already been working on that, except that we didn't have all that front end stuff that you're working on. So but we, <laughs> we're, we're there. God we're works. there. All Perfect. Because right. everything so all that, stands in All that assessment order. stuff, we got it. I like it. I so like we're it. both in our up front. Yeah. So, all, so you see how it's working? You see the synergy? Mm -hmm. The front end, you do all the qualification stuff. I call that pre-qual. Yep. And then we do the secondary call right there, yeah. and Absolutely. then you close it up. So From there. Now, value, everything is a value-add scenario. It is. This is the Association of Sales Supply Chain Professionals. 
which we need vendors around the world in every area within this circle. Every single one of them. We don't just need one Six Sigma company though. You're going to need ones that have quarter million dollar projects, ones that do $10,000 projects, ones that do full ERP implementations, ones that have experience in SAP, J.D. Edwards, right, right. WMS, you're going to need all of them. Right. So the more vendors we have in here in every single category, the better because you're no longer thinking, and I must sell this deal whether I'm the right fit or not. You're thinking about all of the data that I have, what's a good fit for that potential prospect. Your job is to give them a strategy map that tells them, I think these are the three vendors that are, are best for you. One, because of personality. I don't think you can work with blank, 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 blank. <laughs> Two, because of location. They're in your backyard. Three, because of whatever it is. So this process, when this vendor, and one of those companies can be yours. You have first shot. However, you can't be the receiver and the giver. So whoever does the secondary qualification, when you hand them over to the business, has to be someone else, obviously, that represents the company. Yeah. This individual, when they close, they basically got a completely qualified lead, all the deal, details they need in order to make a decision. You can't get a better opportunity than this, not even from your own sales force. So we fixed the problem of business development for vendors through this, an incredible process, which you this would cost a fortune to hire internally and do all Oh, no things. doubt. So, That's why it hasn't been done yet. <laughs> <laughs> we do it all day. But, all right. So basically what they do when they close a transaction, they pay 25% of the transaction and a 10% of any reoccurring revenue that they make from it. This transaction fee does a couple of things. One, it pays this person. Two, it pays this person. Now you have the, the last component for speakers, which is the biggest issue. You don't have a way to make any money their books and CDs and everything else. Now, when a speaker speaks to an audience of 100, they're no longer desperate to sell that book in the back of the room or that coaching cram. All they're thinking about is, what do you need? It might not be me. It might not be me today. It might be me right. six months from now. They got a network now. So it's like they're Verizon. They got a ton of people behind them now. Oh, that's a good commercial. I like that. That's great. Yeah. Put, <laughs> put, put Jennifer right here, like 1,500 people behind her. <laughs> Say, we got everything you need. That's pretty good. You are a marketing guy. <laughs> there you go. But I, I see the vision. I see the vision. So vision is nice. This is a big deal. These people pay a, a membership fee. They pay a small membership fee. And if we have to put them in free, I don't care because they drive everything. Mm -hmm. These guys pay nothing. They participate mm -hmm. and they have ownership. They have a mm -hmm. major role. This is we have they to have a stake have in the game. It's called skin in the game. Yes. Skin in the game is and what it's called. And these guys pay a monthly membership fee as well. Should these guys add them or them, they get a piece of that membership fee. Should mm -hmm. these guys add them or them, which they will, they get a piece of the membership well, fee. That's what we call a win-win scenario, if you ask me. Absolutely. So, WW. So let me show you real quick how to pop up a, a city. Because a lot of times people say, how do you do it? Let's say I want California. Yep. I go find a top-notch social media speaker in California. Say this lady's name is Kay Wallace, for okay. example. Kay Wallace owns her own social media agency. She's been speaking for the last 15 years. She has over 30 contacts with organizations she can sign on this program right now. So she goes and signs her 30 event locations. She has 200 speaking events that she has to fill. Now she goes out to all of the speakers that she's held the stage with, tells each one of them, I can place you right now. I have 200 events I have to fill in the next 12 months. Are you interested? Yes. Sign on, pay the fee, and so forth. However, when you sign on, by the way, there's a new revenue model. Do you have any vendors that fall within this? So each vendor, or each speaker goes out and they bring in 10 of the vendors that they've been referring to already for the last 15 years. And they tell them, I'm going to be able to generate business for you. I've sent you referrals forever. Now I actually have a platform to develop more business for you. Now you have the entire model popped up in another city. You can do this in 90 days. That does not take that long. I see it. You see, see it? Vision. Okay. See vision. So a couple things. One, these individuals, marketing, how do we make this work? We have uh, our own production studio, which at that studio we have the ability, that was Craig who was on here earlier with the green screen behind him. Okay. So we're going to have an online TV program. Mm -hmm. On that TV program, that will be under dnetstrategy.com. Every one of our strategic partners needs to host their own show. As the host of your own show, we'll be funneling potential prospect vendors, potential events. Uh, we'll be funneling vendors, or I mean uh, speakers and so forth. And it's your role as the host of that TV show to interview them as to how what you do applies in their business, how it doesn't work in their business, some um, issues they've had. It's not a sale. So if you have somebody that just launched a makeup line, it wouldn't be a conversation saying, tell me about your makeup line. It would be, how do you think this is applies in your business? 
how, do you, how is the infrastructure set up? Do you have a CRM set up? How are you, are you using Excel spreadsheets? What are you doing to map process? What is the flow? Or what kind of distribution model do you have? Direct ship, warehousing, right, what right, is it? Right. So, so you're saying it'd be, it'd be Lean Six Sigma kind of centric discussions for companies that, that uh, potentially might use us or might need help. Absolutely. So, okay. And they might not even know it exists. We might throw someone over the fence, and they're like, "What is it?" Yeah. Exactly. Huh? Okay. Yeah. How would that apply? You, yeah. you would have to. I, I heard it. lean was uh, the new thing for uh, Weight Watchers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm kidding. So, but 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 yeah, for your process. So yeah, I can see the vision, and, and you know what? Everything is going network TV now with mm -hmm. the Apple TV. The airwave television oh, yeah. is going away because you know they forced them to go digital. Mm -hmm. Now that the airwaves have gone digital. Now the traditional cable TV is gone now because everyone's satellite and dish and everything. So yeah, the regular TV is going away. So having a TV is like cutting edge. Oh, absolutely. It yeah, also on the internet. that will force these guys. If worst case scenario, say they get no business out of the out of the program, but we're putting them on air. We're giving them marketing content. We're blogging about them and so forth. So we have TV and then we have um, DNet Mag which is an online magazine that features content from our contributing authors, which we allow our association speakers and strategic partners to contribute content to. So you're bringing mass amounts of leverage into a central location. You could never do that on your own website. Number one issue with all businesses when it comes to digital marketing is lack of content. They can't produce content. A website's not going to do anything for you. It has to have reoccurring content on a regular basis. So you get to partner with a whole bunch of strategic partners build the content, build the traffic. It's almost like taking a TechCrunch or a Mashable. Have you ever seen those? One of, which one sold? Mashable, multi-million dollar sale to CNN. CNN. Oh, really? What big, do they do? big, big. Just what content. Oh, wow. All the content everybody dollars. has. Now, yeah. if I was to ask you from a internet point of view, <laughs> say a typical company such as a uh, John Deere or a Toyota, how would how do they use the internet to make their business you know through how how are they using this kind of a thing to make their business the number one in the world? Well, John Deere and Toyota they have something going for them which small, mid, and startup companies don't, which is time. So time online almost means more than. What do you mean by time? What do you mean? They've been time? on the internet Reputation. for the last twenty years. They've been there a long time. Their domain name has been live, mass amounts of traffic, okay. and so forth. So when they started their website. It was a different ball game. When they started, okay. they did brochures and flyers and billboards and TV and radio and so everything. So they built else. reputation they built before they got to the net. They were already well known. That's why they're well known. Okay, give me an example now. of someone who was not well known and hit the web in advance. Like, um, who's the shoe? Tom Shoes. Well, we have our own clients, but Tom Shoes is a great example. Okay. Startup company. They did everything social, mobile, video, content. It was creating awareness before the company launched. They had tons of stories about what they were going to do, their mission, how they were going to help before people. Before they sold a product. All way the, before they So they had it. a media frenzy before they even sold a unit. Yes. It is, is right? about tr you, leveraging the Internet to treat your story as a real human capital, as a, a journal, a documentary, a diary, not like an advertisement. Anything you treat like advertising, you get the same results. So if you have an online brochure, this, our products, our services, contact us, FAQ, you're done. It's going to work just like that brochure. That's why that's going to be a big leap for me because I'm not really like a social media person. I, I, I look at it. I know people, uh, well, I have to learn, I look but, at but I'm, not, I'm not really that person. So I, I, want, I need to learn about what, I guess, other people do. I must be weird because I'm not. I don't tweet. I don't do a lot of that stuff. But this is this is know, this is the cool part. If you that. publish con, so let's say you business wise, you're yeah. great at presenting. Yeah. So you have an online video just like this. Mm -hmm. You do your online video. You take that video. You slap it onto your blog. You publish mm -hmm. your blog, and we'll send it out to your social network. You okay. just have to answer when people have questions. Right. And but after Google. you and I got done, right. right. I had three people, after I posted where I was at and tagged mm -hmm. in, three people asked me, I was interested in that. How do I do it? And because I'm speaking, wow. yeah. speaking Isn't that something? This, and I've already posted tonight, so I'll be curious wow. to look in the morning. But the way my brain works is I have to instantly be able to catch wow. you online. So I looked right. you up on Facebook, right. and I just wanted to tag you and say, right. hey, Tyrone, right. me Joe. Yeah. But yeah. because it required a phone call and a yeah. phone number yeah. Yeah. and yeah. an email, too much, stop. Too much trouble. I got you. So having that... Instant access is a very powerful thing. Oh, absolutely. Versus There's the old call and I got your voicemail and all way. that. They want to be, dude, exactly. you see that? OMG, right back and all that. Yes. That's kind of like cool, right? Mm -hmm. All right. Well, I guess I'm learning. I'm learning because I don't do all OMG. I've done all that. So. Yeah. 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 Yeah
This is what I want to do that is different than every other strategic partner that we have. I want you guys to, one, help us define the sales supply chain. Yep. I want to eventually create a curriculum and have it as part of the curriculum in, in um, uh, university. And I want to have a certification program for a vendor to actually be certified in the sales supply chain. I want to develop it, sell it, partner with you. I want it to come from a company that that's your background that's right. and people that that's your background. It's, it's funny you ask people that because that's exactly what we can do. It's amazing. I mean, like flawlessly, we can do exactly what you're asking for. So what happens is, wow. is like today, we're yeah. recording today. Yeah. So what I'd like to do is, you need content. Right. So what we can do is, as you certify us, we will record everything. Okay. We'll take pictures of everything. We'll develop content for everything. So he's on my got people oh, commenting really? and liking. Oh, really? Wow. And so you would basically a adopt a marketing Jeez. company. We have your best interest at heart, right. vice versa. Right. Right. We would use us as your guinea pigs for okay. your content, publicize right. the content, and people get to watch us go through the process internally as an organization. We've got a lot of unique individuals and positions. It's a great example for a mid-sized right. business. Great. Right. Tell you what, this, this is fantastic. And... Uh, we couldn't have uh, dreamed this. It's almost like we dreamed individual dreams, mm -hmm. and then it just came together because we were on the back end working that piece on the back end, but we had a, no idea to how to work the front end. But you guys were working the front end, and then you're like, S we got to get somebody to do the back end. Mm -hmm. And now that the two ends are connecting, that's that's something. I put it this way, I'm kind of freaked out because it's just <laughs> because <laughs> it's like almost like I you guys are reading the TV. Morning, too, 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 I, I'm, too. I'm freaked out because. There's no way you could have known this is exactly what we needed in the front end. Because uh, I can't even put it in words. I'm freaked out. That's all I'm saying. I'm freaked out. Because we do that back end of what you're looking for. It could have been you said, oh, well, we needed this. Was, oh, man, we're not good at that. Or I can say, can you do this? Well, we're not really good at that. It's, it's like we're good at what we do. And that's exactly what we need. And it's all value add. VA, that's going to be a term I'm going to use. Value add. There's just nothing... Everything you showed me here is valuable. Mm -hmm. And i be honest with you, I'm a person that will speak my mind. If I saw something not valuable, I'd tell you. I I'm just going to let you know. I'm not, I'm not shy about it. I'd say, I don't know if that's valuable. Mm -hmm. But what you showed me is very valuable, very you. doable. No, it, it, is, it is. Hey, I'm just going to tell you the truth. I wouldn't lie to you. Uh, the way you laid it out, I would say the first, the next steps, the next steps I would think is, um, any any information you have about how this model looks like, soft copies of things like this, put it in an email or put on a memory stick. Thank Let me know. start to go through it so I can look at understanding what this would look like because right now all I have is a 50,000 foot level. Mm -hmm. I, need a, I need to digest a little bit more of what you're trying to do. Mm -hmm. And once I understand that, then I can help us with the development of it. Now, this, right now, this project know. you're going to love. I want you to think about the data elements involved in this. We have an ERP system, which is mother node. We'll set you up with an account, get you access, and so forth. We yeah. have not we have not um, configured the value list yet. Okay. We have not actually placed the data elements to the corresponding resources. So, okay. for example, is a speaker a product? Do we check them out? Do we check them in? Is it an inventoryable item? Do we take a speaker and do we issue a work order or do we issue a service order? When a speaker closes a deal and has a list of opportunities, yeah. how do we attach those to? All thought process. I know this is. Uh, that's not is a one-word answer. So this is a. Uh, give me what you got, and then we can think about it. And like I said, I think one of the first things we got to do is put together a Gantt chart that shows oh. how we're going to phase this thing in, that's because right. we don't want to have the stuff all over the place. Mm -hmm. And what we want to do is have a timeline attached to each one of those things mm -hmm. in a Gantt that says. Within these two weeks, we're going to have these deliverables, mm -hmm. this two weeks, and so, on, and so on. But those are going to be 50,000 foot deliverables yes. because in, under, under, under each one of those, there will be a little team of people doing those kind of things. Mm -hmm. But, so the first step is a Gantt. But before we can make the Gantt, I have to have some knowledge. I got to have some knowledge. Too. I have to have some knowledge. They're voting for you. No. Uh, <laughs> you get your 10. <laughs> <laughs> got the other for I guess I'm, I'm working with you guys. I guess we're all on the same page then, right? We are on the, the same Gantt page. Because the Gantt is the next thing. So that's why there's such a big, that's why there's such a big light bulb up there. There you go. So we can the do what we need to do. The sooner these guys can get to the same language as, as us, so the better. Because okay. Gantt and Statement of Work and so forth, right, there, we're right, going to need all those. Right. 
I, at a minimum, how soon can we get everybody through our white belt? Because I think that's a basic We minimum. can do it right away. I mean, okay. we can, Kathy will do all the scheduling. Okay, next week, Saturday, okay. can we get everybody to sit in the white belt? You can yeah, do it, we'll you can it, do it by the Internet. I think that would put everybody on the same page as far as when we talk about Lean Six Sigma it's terms, it's not foreign. Because what you don't want to do is add complexity to what you're trying to do. You're trying to execute. But if you have to teach on top of execution, mm -hmm. that's double trouble. So you'd rather just get the teaching components out the way, at least some basic pieces, and then we can start executing. And the same language. Yeah, under the same, without the same language, you're not going to apply. Yeah. So yeah, so let's schedule the white belt at a minimum, ASAP, and the next piece is give me some knowledge. Send me some knowledge like these particular diagrams you made. Send me that. Let me uh, digest it. And then next meeting, we'll put together a Gantt chart mm -hmm. of what we believe we need to do and what time frame, and then we can go from there. I'm going to also send you the financial projections so that if you weren't sleeping tonight when you got home, you won't tomorrow. Uh -huh. can, All right. can, can we not do it on a Saturday? Uh, well, you, we could, yeah, for this small group. We can do it. Uh, tell you what. If Did you, you guys ask need, for it on a Saturday? You do want to? We said uh, no, no, I do no, not. We, we schedule on he the said show. Saturday. You know what I can do? I forgot. I can do this. I can give you your own personal presentation where I bring the presentation here, and we can meet here and just go for three hours, uh, a day that's good for everybody in the evening. So okay. Right. We, it'd have to be an evening, though. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 Okay. Weekday yeah. evenings six are best. How long six and for us, anyway. We do real estate on the weekend. And this is Father's Day weekend. So, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. That. So yeah. next yeah. week, yeah. so you guys think about it next week. Uh, your timing for three hours where you want to carve out. I'll make sure my schedule is clear next week. And um, you guys come up with a day. I'm, I'll be flexible all next week from 6 to 9 would be best to me. Okay. And if we can lock that in. And then I'll get us all now. speaking in the same language. And uh, Wednesday night. There Wednesday. Are no other everybody? Okay, Wednesday. It's Wednesday. Okay. Wednesday's good. We're out of town Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. He's out of town Thursday, Thursday Friday, Saturday, Saturday, Saturday. So Wednesday night day. Okay. On the 20th. And, and by the time uh, next week, Wednesday, by that time, you will already have sent to me some information about, you know, what you're trying to do. And the strategic, and then, we'll send in the strategic partnership yep, agreement. Please, yes, send me all that. Yep. And then, so by the time when I meet back here, and um, we can start putting, uh, like I said, if you want, we can do the uh, three-hour training, but eh, it's probably too much to do in one day. We'll do the training, and then we'll, we'll schedule another uh, one-hour session to go over the Gantt piece. And then Did we'll get to the point where we can probably break up because maybe he doesn't need the whole team. Maybe the first phase one might be the, the speaker uh, event qualification team. Might be two of the, the four people or uh, six people. Yeah, so we might Somebody break have up some music one. on? I, I, no. Is there any music here? No. Nope. But, uh, yeah, someone's probably singing or something. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> but, but basically what we're going to do is uh, after the Lean Six Sigma training, we'll, we'll have another group one where we, we talk about the Gantt, which is going to be all of the deliverables that we think we need to do in order to be successful. TV. And then we'll carve it into phases. And then all the phase one people, they meet in the family. I love it. I love That's it. The plan. Are you interested right now in us putting you in these initial speakers? Uh, yeah, but I, I like to talk about what Ben did before I do anything like that. So, but yeah, he's not getting to it, so Ben can hear this back because he's out of town right now. But definitely, uh, I'm very interested. So, um, as a speaker, who, who wouldn't want to speak if you were a speaker? But uh, yeah, that, I'm good. I'm, as far as I'm concerned, I'm good. I think I know Michael. where he's going. And it makes a lot of business sense. I'm on mute. I don't have ever done it before. Has it been done before? Are you sure? I don't know. Can't Not even close. Yes, in, in the really? title for next week? Be... Just call it Lean Six Sigma White Belt. Okay. WB. Michael, I muted you. There was some background noise coming from you. Oh, Mike, Mike was probably playing around with kids or something. Yeah. But, uh, but yeah, so definitely I'm, I'm ready to rock and roll, and uh, I'll definitely uh, pitch the excitement to, uh, to Rita, and, um, and I, I see us definitely moving forward. Uh, there's an opportunity here for all of us to win. I think it's a win-win. I don't see a downside at all to it at all. But when you get a, a model that's WW, that's kind of, yeah. I could, it's almost like you, you got to be an idiot not to do it kind of thing. You know, and I, I don't think I'm an idiot. So at least I, I don't think I am. I could be, but I don't think I am. But, uh, so that's why all I'm right, everybody, take a vote.
Take a vote. <laughs> oh, yeah. 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 Votes are in now. You never know. Hands up. But, uh, <laughs> I guess that's a relative question of whether or not I'm an idiot. But, uh, but yeah, I, I see the vision. And, you know, it, it makes so much sense. That's what really it makes. And, you know, life, life would be so much easier with this going on. <laughs> and and just FYI, you guys tell me how this would be valuable to you, but I got a, a brother in New York, and he's connected with social media. He's got a friend that has, on his Twitter account, 27 million people. That's a couple people. Well, what he said, this is what he said. And he said, well, well, he, he, yeah, well, well, the guy, he's the guy, he's the guy, uh, I don't know if you heard about this one song way back. Soldier Boy and he had his, his little, you know, he had a little rapper guy. Anyway, he went viral because of this guy. This guy put him on his Twitter, let the people hear it. Next, you know, he's getting record deals and everything. So people can be made by you know yep. Twitter can make people who are not even anybody. So yep. you know, so yeah, so so can, so can um, YouTube. Yes. That Justin too. Bieber? Yeah, I, I, didn't, YouTube. I didn't know that that was how you started. That's amazing. That's how we started and got discovered. Wow, wow. So, I mean, so I believe it works, but you just got to know some yeah, people, person who does it. Mm-hmm. I don't do it, but if I know somebody <laughs> who does do it, that's valuable information y'all would want to know, right? You he would, would be a that. good person for you to interview on your first TV yeah. show to yeah. talk about how does supply chain management or how does Six Sigma risk work in the social environment? How does he monetize what he do? How does he track what he does? And I got to I gotta do questions. that first myself. I don't know how he does it either. Actually, the better yeah. part is even if you hadn't. If I, you yeah, said, I don't know I don't how know, he does it. I'm but curious, how do these things well. apply within your... He's do, well, tenant. from what he's telling me, people will hit him up and say, I need you to put me out there. I'll pay you X amount of dollars. Hmm. And that's a, He just gets paid to put stuff out. And, I mean, what a, what a living, you know. Nice. Hey, man, hey, I'm coming out with a new uh, cheeseburger, uh, the, the, uh, the, the Tyrone Butler steak or whatever. And then he puts it out there. Next, you know, people want my sakes. I can't. You know. <laughs> it, it's, it's sometimes it's, it, I know it seems you know over under over understating it, but that's the way he says it. You put it out there, and people want it. Yep. Whether it's good or not, it's because he said so, or because his he's network. Got a of he's got that's it. That's, it. Uh, that's what I'm saying. Motto. That's the whole thing. Is that, yeah. Third party endorsement. I mean, third party introduction. Third party validation. Third yeah, party business. Yeah, and and I, I like what you said. The growth opportunity. You you could really in a sense take over the world with this thing. Yes. Uh, you could be like Pinky and a Brain on this thing. <laughs> we world are domination. The world. <laughs> we are the <laughs> and the other side of the coin with that too is as the technology evolves and changes, this is not a static. I know. That's the scary part about it. You can this flex is very it. Very dynamic. You can, you can flex, flex it. all kinds of muscles as they grow and change. So. I, that's I was checking that out. Trust me, I was looking at. Capacity and you know, so where you get to evolve. a saturation point. Well, really I don't see a saturation point. Yeah. You can evolve it. You can change up the model. Yeah. Your feedback matters a lot. I'll it tell you really what, I appreciate it. I know well, you've had a lot of experience. I've been around. Of companies, and so. this is an eye opener. This is an eye opener. And I'm like, wow. I'm just surprised no one's ever done it before. I still keep saying that. We have a very, very unique team of talents and experiences. Our backgrounds. And our, what we all bring to the table is so different. <laughs> we, this is probably one of the most unique group of talent that have been brought together and backgrounds and experiences everybody online. It's unreal. But that's where it comes from. It's everyone's histories and pieces all coming to the table to make it so that we can do this. I, a lot of people have said that I shouldn't, um, I shouldn't be talking about it yet, that I should be nervous or have a red sea mentality. Can't do it. It's Nobody impossible else can do it. because I wish someone yeah. would. I wish you would. We have the Try infrastructure, it. the servers, the marketing, the video, the tech, I mean, the network, the experience. We've been, this is not a new business model. This is how we run our own business. That's right. We do it all day long. Right. So we just need, we need to be very, very carefully transition from marketing brains to your world, and we have to do it fast because the bottom line, in my view, of this entire business model, mm-hmm. we are data managers, data process, data flow, payment flow. <laughs> it's mass amounts of right. data and how right. they interact to each other, right. how they flow, the process, the accuracy, the speed is critical. So that's why we want to switch gears as quick as possible. It's funny because uh, I don't know if you guys heard about this book uh, by a guy. It's called the uh, Atillionaires. Have you guys heard of this book? No. Uh, it's A P P I L O N E R E S. I bought the book because I was 
amazed with how many people uh, have made millions off of the Apple Store. And they had they tell the whole story of the millionaires that came from the garage, the garage programmers. Now they pay 99 bucks to get the software development kit from uh, Apple, and then they're out there putting out these applications like Angry Birds and things of that nature. And I read the book, and one of the things it said it said the App Store, the reason why it existed, is because of homebrew. Mm -hmm. Homebrew started making apps that the App Store wasn't putting out there. There was no App Store. People wanted more content than what they. Apple was putting out there. Mm -hmm. So just by, you know, without a software development kit, they actually put out games. And then Apple said, you know what? We can make money off this. Instead of letting these uh, homebrew guys make money on the side, we can bring it all to us and leverage we control brand, it. Leverage our network. And That's what this thing, thing is right here. So this is like taking the homebrew speakers mm -hmm. and bringing them into the App Store. Mm -hmm. See, you see the analogy yeah. there, guys? That's what, this Think is putting this. structure around creativity. Think about you have two speakers, equal equal talent. One's been out on the market for thirty years. Their average speaker fee is fifteen grand. So they're going in at fifteen grand. One of our speakers, exact same talent, less years on the market. Mm -hmm. They don't have to take the speaker fee mm -hmm. because they have the infrastructure to make all their money on the back end. Oh yeah. So that opens the door for a lot of I tell you, this is nothing. This is like the app store. I'm trying to tell you, guys. This is like the app store. You're absolutely right. And it's going to hit. It's going to win, man. That's why I'm excited. I know homebrew is there, and the app store is like a gazillion dollars now. That's what this is. The app. It's all about meeting needs, right? That's right. That's all business does at the end of the day is help other people meet their needs. That's all. So the beauty of it is, it's not only you meeting the needs of the speakers and the vendors, but you're really at the end of the day. You're needing the need of the consumer. Of course. That's and it's free what for them. Is. That's right. It's all free for them. That's the key. The end business owner. Is it all apps free? They said 80% of the apps are free. And Only 20% of them are paid. Yeah. But yet there's gazillionaires on the phone, on, on the web. I've done my research on this. Yeah, got it. <laughs> so, trust me. So I'm, I'm like looking at this and doing, dude, this is the app store, man. <laughs> so that's what's going on in my head right now. I like it. That's why I'm freaking out. He's going to be a strategic partner now. So. There's one yeah. more element that's even bigger than this okay. financially. I'm listening. I'm listening. So essentially what this is, like you said, is the app store, which effectively is a vehicle to take anything you want to market. So our final component is when the vehicle is created and ready and the, the audience is ready to receive, we will have so much data from the assessments to identify true needs by industry, by group, by audience, by market segment, by size, by everything, that we can literally create any product, put it through the network, sell it within the entire network. You're creating one product, repeat sales. So, I mean develop, so applications, technology. So say that little application that you showed me um, to manage um, Six Sigma charts, mm -hmm. say that you notice that in the, in the um, small to mid-sized business realm, they didn't have a sophisticated project management tool, or they didn't have a sophisticated Six Sigma measurement tool, right. or a lean measurement tool, right. and you wanted us to build it. Right. We could fund it, build it, because we have nice. the team and the talent to be able to do, do it. We could invest in it. We would own a piece of it. You would own a piece of it. Not just as traditional investors. We have the market, and we take it to market, and we're done. So that's the Think final of the component. Products we can take the market and get a oh, reoccurring yeah. income on month after month after month after month. There's companies out there like FreshBooks gets their idea. They went. What was their what was the revenue? Do you remember? They went from being oh. a tiny little company to a two hundred million dollar company in less than eighteen months. I'm real. Just because there was a demand for a product online that connected as a as a merchant service, but provided the invoice need that goes along with it as well, yeah. and it just skyrocketed. So as we're hearing the needs that the, all these consumers are telling us they have, yeah, then we can turn right back around and market those products to them directly. That's called the United Beautiful States. thing. And then on top of that, let me throw one more lady on there. There's another thing called business intelligence. Yeah. That's the, yeah. Yes. Yeah. So That's now as, you're, as you're collecting all this data, yep. there's companies out there that take business inte intelligence and they sell it to companies to say, you know what, your next big iPhone should look like this okay. based on business intelligence. <laughs> yeah. exactly. Absolutely. Or Instagram, make something like Instagram or whatever. Absolutely. So yeah, so having so as you're building this, the database is going to be developed with tons of intelligence and then you can sell the intelligence out to, to designers. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So it 
It's no. It's almost like nothing's being wasted. It looks like you no got a cow and you're eating everything on the cow, even the hooves. You know. It feels like it's being wasted now, putting it all in the plate. You got to do the hard work up front. You got to do it up front. It just. <laughs> no, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not even worried because I heard about the app store. <laughs> no, seriously, if you guys read what I read, you'd be like, "Duh, I can do this. I got, it. I got this." Because homebrew to app store, big yep. leap. But if you look at the sales revenue and how, and they and they went exponential. It wasn't no like it a flat line thing. It, it went like a hockey stick. Uh-huh. From the time they opened an app store, they have not looked back, and they're like 500 million apps out there now, mm-hmm. and they qualify uh, uh, so many millions uh, uh, every week or something. It's ridiculous. And they're getting a cut of every little one of those apps. Mm-hmm. So, so yeah, um, I see this as the app store. And exactly. All right, we're in. All right, I'm in. I'm good. Love uh, it. Love I'm, it. I'm excited. Anyone online, do you guys have questions, thoughts, or comments before we uh, jet out? Find the contract. <laughs> <laughs> That is I'm Michael. Sorry, <laughs> Michael. Trust I've me. already got him. If it, if, it was, if it was me solo, I'd, I'd do it, but I definitely have a business partner, and, we, and I want to be fair to him. But when he hears this, he's going to hear the recording, obviously. He's going to be like, okay, Tyler, let's do it. So. Excellent. So we don't have a lot of time. We need to just Yep, yep. I'm there. I'm there. <laughs> all, right. all right. So that's all Thanks, I got. Thanks, you guys. I appreciate you Thank you, Tyrone. We Tyrone. appreciate it. Oh, Tyrone. Thank you guys for your time. Hey, Tyrone, did you get that text with the info? Oh, from the, uh, your friend? Yes. Yeah, I did. I, I called her, and, and we're going to connect tomorrow. Outstanding. Thank you. Hey, hey, thank you for the referral. No problem. All right, guys. Hasta la vista. Ciao. Thanks, everybody. Remember, Have a the good night. App Store. Just remember App Store. <laughs> Homebrew versus App Store. Okay. And that it's should get you our next fired meeting. up every morning. Get our next meeting scheduled. Kathy's scheduling it, and she'll make sure everybody has invitations. All right. Thank you. All right. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye. Ciao. Arrivederci. Adios.